The game I'm going to show you features a very creative opening idea, a classic kingside attack and some crazy tactics. So keep watching. This is great stuff. This is the game between Ivan Sharic and Vasil Ivanchuk played in the Generation Cup, this online rapid play tournament that's uh, just, just over, actually. We know Magnus Carlsen was the convincing winner. But I've been looking back at some of the other games and this one really caught my eye. Well, it's always worth looking at the games of uh, Ivanchuk. I mean, he is an absolute legend. Very creative, but actually it's his opponent, uh, Ivan Sharic, who comes up with this interesting opening idea. So it's a French defence, and Ivanchuk plays this so-called Fort Knox variation. <laughs> so it's hard to crack, basically. The idea is this bishop, which was locked in, comes out, attacks the central knight. And you can see that the, the pawn structure they have it arises out of, well, sometimes the French, sometimes the Karakhan, sometimes the Slav. It's very common indeed. It's kind of a signal that Ivanchuk is saying, OK, this isn't super theoretical, but it gives me a solid position and I just want to play chess, basically. And it has a reasonable reputation. Here, the most popular move, the most normal move, is just to withdraw the knight, keep as many pieces on the board for white as possible, and you try to go for a kingside attack, but it's a tricky position. It's uh, Black is very solid. But Charich, here's where he plays something a little bit unusual. He plays rook e1. Now, at first glance, this looks very mild. This basically gives Black everything he wants. Ivanchuk exchanges here, takes off that dangerous bishop, and then plays c6. So you can see this is, it's just like a Karakhan, or indeed the Slav. You can reach this kind of structure from both those openings, and indeed the French, as here. And normally, after the exchange of all those minor pieces, then black shouldn't have any difficulty at all. So why did Sharich play like this? Well, it's all about that rook on e4. Watch what happens. First of all, c4. Oh, it's a useful move anyway, just gaining space, taking away this square from black. But it's also partly a waiting move. This is interesting. Knight f6, played by Ivanchuk. Now, instead of bringing the rook backwards, Sharic plays rook h4. This is his idea. This is why he's allowed all those minor pieces to be exchanged, because he's able to put this rook on the king side. Very interesting indeed. So it's, it's actually, it's not mild at all. It's a really aggressive way of playing the position. By the way, if black had played, let's say, bishop b7, then, of course, the rook can't go to h4, but you could still play the rook to g4. And you still get your rook on the king side. So, anyway, the game. Knight f6, rook h4. I mean, it's so direct. Queen c2. These pieces lining up against h7. I mean, this is so such a brutal way of playing. But actually, it's really not bad. And Ivanchuk decides to castle. Don't have to castle, um, but, well, okay, he's he's brave, he goes for it. Bishop g5, threatening simply bishop takes knight, and queen takes h7 checkmate. How does black defend against this? Well, you have to either play g6 or h6. If g6, you can see there is a little bit of a weakness here. Maybe just queen d2. And we just need to get that bishop out of the way, and the queen will come in. So it's dangerous. So Ivanchuk decides to play h6. Now, first instinct here, of course, is just to take that off. Now, Sharic didn't do this, and 
he was right in not playing like this because actually black can defend very easily. You can notice that square is covered by the knight. When the rook retreats, rook h8. And actually, black has very good communication here. Check doesn't really do much. The king is quite safe behind these pieces and the rook stands well on the h-file, preventing white from really building up an attack. So after h6, Sharich played correctly. He just withdrew the bishop. Queen c7 from Ivanchuk. And now rook e1. It's a good move. You bring the queen's rook into play along the semi-open file. That looks very sound. Rook d8. Okay, now I'd like you to have your first little think of the game. How would you play with white in this position? White to play. White to play here. You can see that the white has built up very nicely, but how exactly do you make progress here? I'll have a quick slurp of tea. You have a little think. Well, Sharich didn't mess around. He simply played bishop takes pawn on h6 and well, I'll show you what happens after that. It's certainly not a bad sacrifice. But actually, he could have lined things up first. He could have prepared it. And this might be even stronger than... No, I think it is stronger than the game continuation. Simply queen c1. I mean, it is very direct, very brutal. I mean, this really appeals to me. Simple threat. Bishop takes pawn and the queen and rook break in. Therefore, black has to react. So knight h7, now this rook is attacked. The rook steps back, and this is still a threat. So, I mean, this is, this is really serious. Um, it's, it's actually very hard for black to avoid that. Um, if you, you could play f6 and, and then defend along the seventh rank if this pawn is taken, but of course, that's why this rook moved to e1. Rook takes pawn, and that is a pawn for nothing. White is a pawn up. So queen c1 is the move there. I hope you spotted that. Bishop h6, as played in the game, is very interesting. And now queen c1 was played, but it's not as good. Knight h7, so this is a threat. And Sharich played rook h5. He could have played rook h6. And then f6, black really needs to defend along the seventh rank. And rook takes e6. Well, I think all we can say is that white has decent compensation for the piece. Three pawns, active pieces. But black is pretty well set up along the seventh rank to defend, or rook f7. Probably rook f7, actually, because then you can drop back with bishop f8. I don't think black is in danger in that position, but white should have sufficient sufficient compensation for the piece. But Sharich played rook h5, and, well, here uh, Ivanchuk played in typical defensive style f5. I've mentioned already that the seventh rank is very important. So once that opens, then black is able to bring uh, the major pieces along that line to defend. And it's, it's a very typical way of defending the king side. But bishop g5 was actually a stronger move. If that's taken, then rook takes. Now, you, you don't take that would lead to, to uh, checkmate. Suddenly, yeah, king here and rook up. Um, but, of course, king h8. The knight defends the king very well. And then the rook comes across. And actually, black can defend pretty easily. Because black's communication there between the major pieces and the king and the king's side are actually very good there. Or after bishop g5, if the queen moves, 
Now here's a nice move, queen f4. The queen just comes towards the king side. Um, sometimes queen g4. The queen might also come back here. Uh, black is defending, basically. However, uh, Ivanchuk played f5, and now it's game on again. <laughs> It's just a very unclear position. Rook takes pawn. White has three pawns for the piece. But Ivanchuk has been able to bring his queen across to defend. And here um, one could exchange queens and take a fourth pawn. But actually black is pretty well coordinated there. And that should end up a draw actually. Black is certainly going to get a, a pawn back, and yeah, black is well coordinated. But I think, understandably, Sharich decided, well, if he exchanges queens, I think he, he understood instinctively that black wouldn't be in any danger. So he brought the queen back. And, well, you can understand why, because all his pieces are actively placed. However... It's now Black's turn, and this counterattack is actually quite dangerous. H3 played, remember there's a potential back rank problem there. And here, if Antrop played Bishop B6, he just wanted to try and get his rook in, but actually, uh, my computer points out that it's a good idea to grab the pawn. Now, it's not just about grabbing a pawn, but there's... This actually sets up some very nice tactics. One thing is it clears the, the D file. The bishop is no longer menaced, so it's actually performing a very sound defensive duty on the long diagonal. But there's something else. Let me show you this, this very nice tactic that uh, my computer points out. So an obvious attacking move here is rook h6 in order to swing this rook across to g6, winning the queen. But watch what happens now. Check. And now this is this is quite surprising. Bishop c1. How beautiful is that? A skewer from c1, and that picks up the rook on h6. Very very nice idea. But if Andrew didn't take on b2, he played well. What to my eyes looks like a very natural move, bishop b6, because it maintains this pressure on f2. That's, of course, a weak point. And he just wants to open the d-file. Um, so, yeah, a rook d1 check, and if the king comes here, then potentially bishop c7. And, yeah, I mean, it's another good reason for playing the bishop back to b6, skewering from c7. And that's why g3 was played. Looks like a very natural move in order to bring the king to a light square. So away from any danger with that bishop. And here Ivanchuk should probably just play rook f6 um, to eliminate some of the danger. But he plays rook d7. You know, he allows the, you know, white's pieces to, to maintain their active positions. I mean, it's really chancing it. Here... White has a couple of very interesting moves. I mean, there's the one that Sharich plays in the game. Uh, one could also play simply king g2. It's very dangerous. But he played c5. It's a really interesting move. So this one thing is it opens up this diagonal towards the king. I mean, Ivanchuk took this, but sometimes this is a very interesting move. Not immediately. Take care. There's a pin. I mean, there are so many tactics in this position. But queen c4 is in the air. Watch out for that. But in fact, here, if Sharich just stays cool and plays king g2, then that guards the pawn, takes the king off the back rank, so the king is much safer on g2. And there are so many potential threats here. Now queen c4 hitting the bishop, and on the same line as the king is very interesting. There's also... Knight e5, threatening the rook, supporting a rook here. There's also rook h6. 
if black survived this position, I think it would be a miracle. But instead of king g2, Sharich played knight e5 immediately, which does look very tempting. Hits the rook, threatens here. Rook d6, defends. And here, well, rook e h6 is also very interesting. Still highly unclear. I mean, black can defend, just um, leads to a situation where I think you could say that white has adequate compensation for the exchange. The knight is very powerfully centralized and the king is a little bit exposed. Should be enough for white. Uh, but black is also okay there. But instead of that, Sharich played rook h h6, which looks pretty dangerous. It's sort of reinstating this threat. But after the exchange, black has a very strong move and Ivanchuk found this. Knight g5. Attacks the rook, attacks the pawn here with a devastating fork. And that was basically that. Sharich stumbled on, but he's now a rook down. And Ivanchuk actually mopped up very, very easily in this position, queen g7. Now he's a rook and a bishop down. Uh, so Ivanchuk with black won that game. Here Sharich resigned. But I thought that was a fascinating game. And let me just come right back to the opening. So here the normal move is knight g3, but rook e1, such an interesting move. And suddenly that rook has options to swing over to one of these squares on the king side. That is worth checking out. Always something new to look at in the openings. Um, you know, there, there's this sort of fallacy that because, you know, these supercomputers are now employed to do opening research that somehow, you know, chess is kind of exhausted. But actually you'll find that there are lots of subtle ideas that aren't necessarily the top line of the computer that uh, computers have nevertheless revealed that from a human point of view are still worth playing or very attractive ideas actually, definitely worth playing. And that's one of them. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe to the channel. Let's try and hit that 100,000 mark. It would be great. Thanks for watching.